Inevitably, with theater, or for most things in life for that matter, there are themes and variations. Some of these variations are so far apart from the original theme that, to the casual observer, they wouldn't notice they are related. Other times, the variations are similar enough that it becomes obvious that two pieces of work are essentially so similar that you can hear the echoes of the people singing in the original theme within the variation. Welcome to episode 66 of One Man's Opinion, where I review professional theater across Connecticut and New York. Today I am reviewing the new musical Paradise Square, currently at the Ethel Barrymore Theater at 243 West 47th Street, with a book by Christina Anderson, Craig Lucas, and Larry Kirwan, with music by Jason Howland, and lyrics by Nathan Tyson and Macy Asser, directed by Moises Kaufman, and choreographed by Bill T. Jones. There's an unfortunate coincidence here in reviewing Paradise Square. Just a couple of weeks ago, I saw and reviewed a new musical, Star of Freedom, at Ivoryton Playhouse, which, outside of some book issues, I really enjoyed. I loved the romance between an Irish immigrant turned Union soldier turned deserter with a former enslaved black woman. Now, only weeks later, I am seeing a musical about Nellie O'Brien, played by Broadway's newest star, Joaquina Kalukango, who operates the titular bar, Paradise Square. She is the daughter of a formerly enslaved black man who is married to an Irish immigrant, Willie O'Brien, played by Matt Bogart, who goes off to join the Union Army. Since most people watching this will not have seen Star of Freedom before it closes, I won't dwell on comparing the two because it is currently inconsequential. Besides, there are others to draw here. Paradise Square is set in Five Points, a now defunct neighborhood of New York City. It's 1863, and lo and behold, the melting pot is working. Black and white people are coexisting, intermarrying, and generally getting along well. The dastardly Frederick Tiggins, played by John Dossett, looks to break up the jovial community as an act of believed moral superiority and, of course, increasing personal wealth and power. There is a lot going on in the first act, as many subplots are interwoven. I won't dwell on them too long, because this review would be an hour long, if I did. And nobody wants that. Running Paradise Square with Nelly is Annie Lewis, played by Chalina Kennedy. She is Willie's sister, who has married a black reverend, Samuel Jacob Lewis, played by Nathaniel Stampley. Reverend Lewis is helping Washington Henry, played by Sidney DuPont, an escapee from a plantation, get to Canada, but Washington won't go until his betrothed, Angelina Baker, played by Gabrielle McClinton, also makes it to New York as the two were separated during their escape. Annie's cousin, Owen Duigan, played by A.J. Shively, has just arrived in New York City, and then there is lucky Mike Quinlan, played by Kevin Dennis, who goes off to war with Willie and comes back without his right arm. Finally, there is Milton Moore, played by Jacob Fischel, the drunken piano player, songwriter at Paradise Square, who, out of his own willful ignorance, escalates much of the conflict in the second act. All of this is preamble to when President Abraham Lincoln creates the draft, and it states black people are exempt from the draft, but non-citizen immigrants aren't and you can be exempt from going if you can pay a $300 waiver. There's also a clause that states substitutions are allowed, but why no one speaks on that clause seems to be inexplicable to me. In order to raise money to pay bills imposed by Tiggins and also help save at least one person's life, Nellie and Annie decide to host a dance competition at Paradise Square where the winner receives $300. Meanwhile, the immigrants, who think they're going to be used as cannon fodder since no one cares about them in the first place, decide to protest the draft, which led to the historic draft riots of 1863 that lasted six days in July and cost the lives of over 100 people. By intermission, I began to feel a similarity with Paradise Square to a certain French musical with certain themes that also climaxes with a revolt. And yes, there are many similar themes between Paradise Square and Les Miserables, most notably their themes on fraternity, compassion for the poor and the helpless, and standing up against injustices. Both stories are on a sweeping scale of character and plot, and in both, all the extraneous plots come to a head during a riot. As much as I enjoy Paradise Square, I sincerely did. I never felt myself getting emotionally invested in the story, 
and part of it had to do with seeing so many familiar beats and themes. Also, I felt that there wasn't as much at stake here in Paradise Square, which is weird because on paper there is quite a bit at stake. I think the problem is that the antagonist of Tiggins isn't a compelling enough or threatening enough villain, and when he turns one of the patrons at the bar against everyone else, the threat never really pays off. I also feel that Anderson, Lucas, and Kirwan were afraid to pull the metaphorical trigger, and in a show replete with weapons, Chekhov would have been severely disappointed if you get my meaning. Sometimes, death is necessary in storytelling in order to add weight and peril, and here the loss of a few characters along the way would have gone a long way. Still, the cast is phenomenal. If Kalakongo didn't lock herself as the new big name on Broadway from her show-stopping turn in Slave Play, she has done it here. Her 11 o'clock number, Let It Burn, is immensely powerful and is by far the strongest moment of the show, deservedly getting the standing ovation she got the night that I was in attendance. Bill T. Jones's choreography is fantastic. It's great to see the marriage of cultural dancing between black and Irish people and DuPont and Shively own the stage in their passionate dance-off for the $300. There are great moments in Paradise Square. Annie and Nellie's duet in the second act, Someone to Love, is gorgeous and tender. Uh, Howland's music is riveting. I just wanted more. And if I wanted more because of my previous familiarity with other shows with similar themes, then maybe this is a show where if you haven't seen Les Miserables, you'll probably enjoy it more than I did, and that's fine. I encourage people to see Paradise Square. If for nothing else, see it for Kala Congo, who gives what may be considered a career-defining performance. But I am only one man's opinion, so please feel free to leave yours in the comments below. If you want to see Paradise Square, I'll leave a link in the description. Please show your support for my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell for alerts to future reviews. My next review will be Tracy Letts' new play, The Minutes. So thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.